Thank you very much, David, for this kind of introduction. I'm, I'm very happy to, to be uh, here, uh, albeit uh, virtually at uh, Fields Institute, and um, uh, present you with uh, our recent work on uh, reinforcement learning and inverse reinforcement learning in applications to uh, asset allocation. So my talk will be based on uh, these uh, two papers. It's mostly the first paper, but some theoretical, uh, uh, some mathematical uh, technique uh, used in this paper is also shared in the second paper, which was written with my uh, fourth and my two uh, So the references are here. And um, the background uh, of this talk uh, is uh, the following. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, asset management problems as problems of uh, high dimensional stochastic optimal control. Uh, and a, uh, I will apply uh, a reinforcement learning method, a particular version of reinforcement learning called G-learning, uh, which is essentially entropy regularized uh, Q-learning uh, to these uh, uh, problems uh, of optimal control. And then I will also uh, talk about how uh, we can apply what is called inverse reinforcement learning, or IRL for short, uh, to back up the reward functions of fund managers. And then finally, I will present a combined uh, RL, uh, IRL scheme, uh, which uh, tries to learn from human experts, from professional traders, and potentially improve over their strategies. All right, so let me uh, remind you uh, in brief, uh, what is the task of reinforcement learning? Uh, as probably many of you already know, reinforcement learning is a branch of uh, machine learning uh, that deals with sequential or multi-step decision-making uh, by agent uh, in the course of uh, its interaction with the environment. So which is, is kinetically presented here, we have an agent on the left-hand side, the environment on the right-hand side, the interaction can be online or it can be offline, in which case the environment is just the source of online offline data in this scheme. Uh, uh, and basically which uh, stores the uh, uh, history of interactions between the agent and the environment. And this history consists of repeated uh, tuples of a few values. Uh, so what are these values? At each point in time, at each time step, uh, the agent receives information uh, from the environment, which is encoded in some potentially high dimensional state vector S sub T. And then upon receiving this information, the agent exercises an action AT uh, upon environment, right? So it does something, the agent does something in the context of, context of trading, uh, the agent uh, uh, does trades in the portfolio. Right, and uh, the, the, the ultimate goal of, of this uh, action is receiving rewards. So at each time upon exercising action A uh, in state S, uh, the, action, uh, the agent receives a reward, uh, RT, which is a function of both these variables. And it's a measure of satisfaction essentially of the agent from its own actions. So the, the goal of uh, reinforcement learning is uh, to construct uh, what is called the policy, which is the strategy, which is the rule, how uh, the agent uh, should act uh, upon seeing any particular state, uh, such that it's cumulative reward. So the total reward accumulated over this course of actions of interaction with the environment is maximized, right? And so what I will present is a particular version of RL, which is called g -learning. Uh, and I'll explain uh, how Jerome is constructed. Uh, and then I will present its application to problems of uh, uh, asset allocation and growth management. And then I'll also talk about the inverse enforcement uh, setting for this problem, uh, and then finally about how to combine it. So let's start with the portfolio model. And uh, here we will consider a very simple uh, model of the portfolio and trading. Um, where we have an asset, uh, a universe of n assets, such as stocks, for example, uh, such that vector P uh, sub T will be a vector of market prices of these assets at time T. And in addition, we will have a, a risk free uh, cash account or risk free bond, which pays interest risk free rate RF. 
and a uh, state uh, and the vector x sub t, uh, which uh, belongs to the uh, n dimensional space real or real space, uh, will describe dollar amounts of positions uh, of each individual asset. So the uh, components of this vector can be positive, which means long position, or negative, which means short position. Uh, also, trading has post. Uh, uh, we will not be concerned with market impact, but mostly with peace. Uh, and finally, uh, the, our action variables uh, will be trades, um, which uh, also have uh, it's a vector uh, ut of the same dimension n, uh, which I made uh, a pitch interval in the beginning of the interval. All right. Uh, now, uh, now I mentioned to you that the key uh, quantity which is needed to define any RL problem is the uh, reward model. And uh, in this work, uh, we will choose a pretty simple, uh, maybe the simplest possible uh, model of the reward, uh, which is shown here. So, so what are different uh, uh, terms uh, in this expression? Uh, so first of all, this reward is uh, non-positive. So you can see that each term is defined here such that uh, it's uh, non-positive, therefore the maximum attainable value of the reward is zero. So it's, it's essentially a penalty. And this penalty is made of three terms. Uh, what is uh, the first term is, is probably the most uh, complex and most interesting ones. Uh, so what is what here? Uh, the, the term, this term uh, describes a mismatch between uh, your uh, next step portfolio value and uh, some reference portfolio value p hat, which is shown here. So what is what here? If xt stands for the initial dollar value uh, of all positions, then instantaneously at the beginning of the time interval t plus, plus delta t, uh, the new value will become xt plus ut, right? And then it grows with the uh, stochastic interest rate r. So, so this expression is stochastic because of this guy is stochastic, right? And this whole expression will be the random uncertain at time t value of the next step portfolio, right? So this uh, quantity, the difference simply takes, uh, uh, computes the mismatch of this new portfolio uh, relative to some reference portfolio, which I'll specify shortly. You have it. Right? Now, uh, the, the next, so, so this is kind of tracking our right? Uh, now, the next term is simply uh, a statement of the fact that all portfolio trades, so this, uh, this is the sum of this scalar product, which is the sum of all components of U. So this is the total trade in the portfolio, and this should be equal to the uh, uh, flow into the portfolio. So if, if C sub T is given, and it's given a flow in the portfolio, and then this is the penalty, basically, if you take lambda to a very large Values then it become it will become hard constraint, and uh, that uh, uh, says that all trades should sum up to uh, the four. And finally, the the last term uh, is a simplest possible function for uh, transaction cost, so it's a quadratic function. All right. Uh, now, now what you can see here is that as a function of x and u, this is the quadratic uh, function. Right, uh, which uh, turns out to be a very important uh, for a uh, solution of the model. Uh, now, now I wanted to uh, specify what we mean by this uh, target uh, portfolio, and it's shown here. And the, the target portfolio we define as a, as a combination, as a linear combination of some portfolio independent benchmark BT, which can be any index, for example, S&P 500 or, or Russell, the thousand expressed in dollar terms because we measure everything in dollars. Uh, so we combine this uh, uh, benchmark uh, with the current portfolio, which is uh, this value. That's the total value of our current portfolio uh, multiplied by some uh, uh, growing, uh, uh, growth uh, uh, factor, which we call eta, right? So, so this parameterization involves two, two uh, additional parameters, rho and eta. And um, right, which define uh, uh, relative weights of these two components, uh, and a uh, more so, so which makes a uh, uh, like let's count the number of uh, three parameters in this reward function. We can see that 
It has only uh, uh, four parameters, so two parameters here, this row and eta, lambda and, and uh, omega. Uh, we can replace uh, omega is in general a matrix, but we can parameterize this whole matrix by just a number, which will give us four parameters in total. So it's a very simple uh, reward function, right? We can make it such we can, we can uh, what we do in practice is that uh, uh, it's well known drawback of quadratic uh, rewards or quadratic losses that they penalize equally uh, uh, overshoot and undershoot relative to the target. And we also only want to uh, penalize actual undershoot, uh, but uh, which is not a, a strictly uh, speaking possible uh, in absolute terms with quadratic functions. However, we can make such function uh, that uh, we mostly only in the left uh, tail of this uh, quadratic function, and then uh, we can mitigate uh, somewhat uh, this problem. So, and we've done this by choosing uh, this parameter rho in it in such a way that essentially this target is always not achievable in practice. So it's like a shiny uh, goal somewhere on the horizon that we're just trying to achieve, All right? But it makes, it does the job uh, of, of pulling uh, the portfolio value towards it, All right? So that's the most important thing that we want to achieve from it. All right, now uh, the other component which enters here is that I told you that this is the stochastic interest rate uh, on, on equity. And uh, we, uh, as usual, we write it as a uh, expected return uh, plus the, the random noise. So this will be the, the, the Gaussian white noise. Uh, and, a, and this is just the value which we uh, get from uh, some external model. So uh, our framework does not uh, is it, 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 not concerned with the question how we estimate the expected returns. It comes from the outside from additional model. All right, but uh, um, uh, the the important part is that if we now uh, plug these expressions uh, uh, and expression for the expected return to uh, this uh, formula, uh, then uh, we can see that uh, it takes this. Uh, nice quadratic form is a function of uh, states uh, and, and action variables, right? Uh, so, so reward is, is, is quadratic in these variables uh, and this uh, leads to a semi-analytical solution as I will show next. Uh, now, uh, now, one uh, important difference of this particular version of reinforcement learning that I use here uh, from a more classical uh, and problems uh, approaches of uh, our optimal control uh, is that uh, we deal with uh, uh, stochastic policies. So, so what are stochastic policies? Uh, it, it, when we have deterministic policy, it's just a function. So a deterministic policy gives you a, a fixed prescription of what you should do uh, given a state xt. Um, right, uh, now, um, but, but for practical implications, uh, even though we deal in theory with deterministic policy, uh, because we always find parameters from data, uh, then de facto uh, our policy becomes uh, somewhat stochastic, uh, right? So for example, in, in Markowitz's portfolio model, we uh, estimate uh, expected returns from data and therefore they themselves run, right? Which makes uh, um, allocations Kind of stochastic. So uh, uh, instead of working with deterministic policies and, and random data, uh, we can uh, take a more principled approach and, and, and insist that we work with stochastic policies. And this is what is done here. Uh, and there are multiple advantages of doing it this way, in particular, stochastic policies allow you to uh, quantify uncertainty around your decisions. Uh, all right, uh, so this was about a stochastic policy, uh, right? So when we uh, deal with stochastic policy, we deal basically our uh, uh, action is a distribution. So, so we deal with probabilistic uh, distributions uh, of possible actions given the state. All right, given the state and also given the expected return. You can add expected return to the, to the state vector and you will see shortly uh, why it's actually needed, but for, for a short while, I will continue just by referring to access the state. All right, 
Uh, additional advantage of working with stochastic policies is that uh, if if we, we we use them, then this is the distribution, and therefore we can generate data from this distribution. In, in other words, we deal with a generative model of states of action. All right. Uh, now uh, the the uh, RL with stochastic policies uh, is formulated uh, more or less in the same way, uh, like. The top level formulas look identical uh, to the RL with deterministic policies. So, what we need to do, we need to uh, choose policies such that we want to maximize the uh, expected uh, value of the total discounted reward. So, this is the reward function, and this is the discount factor. This is the total discounted reward. We maximize, we choose policy to maximize. Uh, this expected uh, value, which itself is computed according to uh, this uh, path measure, uh, which for each step decomposes into the probability of the next step given previous step and action and the probability of action. So this is our policy. All right. Um, uh, now, uh, now we uh, want to have a constraint uh, and we want to. Uh, actually, uh, instead of uh, considering arbitrary stochastic policies, we want to uh, constrain them and relate them to uh, what we call a reference policy or prior policy, which we call P0. And uh, this can be something which is based on uh, past historical data or parametric model, uh, something of this sort. And uh, for this, we will use a simple Gaussian policy. So our reference policy will have this form, uh, which is characterized by some mean, uh, which we call a hat, which is a function of the state uh, and covariance. And this mean itself, we will parameterize as a linear function of the state, right? So this, so, so these two parameters, uh, a, uh, a, a not hat and a one uh, hat, and sigma a uh, characterize our uh, prior policy. Uh, now, uh, so now, now I give you a brief uh, uh, derivation of G learning. So, uh, how G learning is uh, uh, obtained is uh, according to following steps. Um, so, here is just a uh, refresher on the Bellman optimality equation, which relates the optimal value function, which is called here V star, uh, with the uh, expected. Uh, Cumulative uh, uh, reward. And the next equation gives you the Bellman optimality equation, which relates the optimal value function with itself, with itself at the later point in time. It also gives you the definition of the optimal policy. So here, optimal policy, uh, uh, th th these uh, equations uh, imply that we deal with the deterministic policy. <coughs> Uh, pi. Uh, so uh, this policy is obtained simply by maximizing this whole expression in the right hand side with respect to actions A. So it's arg max of this whole expression. Uh, now, uh, now we want to uh, move from this formulation to stochastic policies, right? Where uh, policy becomes not a function, but rather a distribution. And, and how we do that? Uh, first, we do it in two steps. First, we rewrite uh, uh, this equation. Uh, which I had here, uh, in terms of optimization, not with respect to uh, actions, but uh, with respect to distributions. Uh, and uh, and, and this, uh, this is actually an identity because of, of this identity. If you, if you have unconstrained uh, distribution, uh, denoted uh, uh, P, right? And then uh, uh, finding the maximum of Xi's over all i uh, is the same mathematically as finding the maximum of this expression, scalar product of p uh, and x, uh, uh, constrained on p being a valid distribution. So it's the same problem. Uh, and if you uh, 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 stay with just this uh, formula, then it will be no different from the original formula. However, uh, what we do, we introduce further constraints to this, right? So we, and these constraints regularize. So instead of arbitrary uh, probability distributions, we will have uh, we will work with regularized uh, 
uh, probability distributions for actions, for policies, uh, by introducing the following thing. It's called the informational cost of uh, learned policy, CP, uh, which is just the log of the ratio of uh, our yet unknown policy, P, and uh, our known reference policy, P0. Uh, now, uh, the expectation uh, of this expression with respect to the policy itself is, as uh, you can easily see, is uh, nothing else but the KL divergence, which is shown here. And uh, using this expression, we can introduce the total discounted information cost for a trajectory uh, by summing this expression with some discount factor along the whole trajectory. So this will give us this information cost. And now uh, we introduce a regularized value function, uh, which is referred here, which is called here in this framework, the free energy function, uh, using uh, analogy with physics. Uh, and this function is introduced as a, an entropy regularized value function. So it's given by this expression. This is our idealization. And if we plug uh, our initial uh, our formula for this uh, information cost, we will see that it's actually the same expression as for the value function in the conventional formulation. However, our reward is now modified by this uh, regularizer term, right? Uh, where beta is a parameter, is a regularization parameter, which essentially controls a trade off between uh, the original task of maximization of rewards and the uh, second task of uh, keeping proximity to the reference policy, which is expressed by this term. All right, uh, so, so now uh, we can uh, re-derive, essentially follow all the steps of deriving the original Bellman optimality equation, but now formulated in terms, formulated in terms of this free energy function. And for free energy function, we can write a Bellman equation uh, uh, which will have uh, uh, the form as we expect. We seem to replace the reward by this modified reward. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, this ex uh, expression, uh, so remember that uh, now we, like unlike the original Bellman equation, now we do this uh, stochastic policies. Uh, we maximize uh, this expression with respect to the uh, uh, policy, the distribution P, and, and therefore this expression uh, can be uh, viewed as a <coughs> soft probabilistic relaxation of the Bellman equality equation, uh, where the regularization is controlled by this parameter beta. Uh, now, uh, next in this formulation, uh, we uh, introduce uh, uh, an entropy regularized version of the Q function. Uh, which is called here the G function. And uh, so uh, e, as, as those of you who are familiar with uh, reinforcement learning, you know uh, the, the Q function uh, is uh, defined as by the same expression uh, as used for the um, value function by the taking discount expectation of the rewards. However, uh, the difference is that uh, the, the Q function is in addition to being a function of the state, it's also a function of the action. And we have the same in this definition. So our entropy regularized Q function is a function, G function is a function of both the state and action. And it's defined as follows, um, uh, which uh, we can, in this equation, we can rewrite uh, as, as this equation. So it, 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 again, it has the same expression uh, it's, we just have to modify the reward by adding this term in order to get this uh, G function. Um, now, uh, now we're in business uh, because now we have all elements uh, which are needed to complete uh, this system of equations. Uh, uh, we can use the last two equations in order to get a new equation which relates the F function with G function. And it's given by this compact expression. Now you can see that it's a functional of, of distribution, which stands here and here. So it's a nonlinear functional. We can maximize it <coughs> uh, with respect to the uh, policy. And this maximization will give us the, uh, ex this expression for the policy. So it, it tells us that the optimal, so now and actually we apply 
uh, 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 this scheme. So we here we assume that we already deal with the optimal policy, which will obtain by iterating these equations, uh, as I'll describe shortly. But the meaning of this expression is that it, it, uh, it gives you the optimal policy here in terms of the prior policy and exponential adjustment of this prior policy, uh, which is given by the G function. Right, and, and finally, this Z sub T here is just the normalization coefficient, which is needed in order to have this as a very uh, probability distribution. All right, uh, now, if you uh, take this expression and plug it back into uh, this expression, uh, then uh, you will see that uh, actually the, the uh, free energy uh, can be expressed as, uh, as it, it's, it's simply proportional to the logarithm of this, uh, of this normalization coefficient, which is sometimes called partition function in physics, and given by this expression. Uh, and, and, and this last expression allows you to write, so basically it's the same expression instead of writing it this way, uh, we can write it this way, all right? So now, uh, now we have everything that we that we need uh, in order to complete the systems, uh, the system of equations. So, so we have the equation uh, given here uh, for three unknowns, uh, which are a g function, f function, and the policy, uh, which we simply have to solve self self consistently for time uh, dependent problems. Uh, all these functions uh, become dependent on time uh, and the system has to be solved uh, recursively backwards in time, starting from the terminal time uh, using terminal conditions, which are shown here. Uh, but for each uh, time step, uh, we simply keep iterating uh, between uh, these equations until uh, we see convergence. So this gives you convergence for a given step, and then you can proceed to the next, uh, uh, to the next, uh, uh, to the previous time step. All right, uh, now, uh, now uh, I already showed you the uh, a, a prior uh, reference policy, uh, PNAC, uh, that we use here. Uh, and a, a for, um, a, a, a for the uh, quadratic uh, uh, reward function, which I specified. Uh, so, so if you have quadratic rewards, uh, and if you have uh, a quadratic reference uh, Gaussian uh, reference policy, then uh, you can verify for yourself that uh, a self-consistent solution uh, of uh, G-learning equations uh, can be obtained using a, a quadratic specification of the uh, value function. So. So you can view the, this as a nonsense, uh, or you can uh, check by induction that actually uh, this is the true functional form. Uh, it's not an approximation, it's a true functional form uh, of the value function uh, where the coefficients fxx, fx, f0 can be uh, obtained as functions of uh, other model parameters. Uh, uh, now, um, um, now, to this, I have to add, uh, in order to get these relations, uh, I have to use the, uh, uh, also the dynamics equation. And dynamics equation for this model, remember that uh, we introduce x as the uh, dollar value of asset positions. Uh, dynamics equation for this x uh, can be written in this form. Uh, so you see that for a given, uh, and a t here is, is, is given by this expression, it depends on expected asset returns. So for fixed value of uh, r uh, bar, you see that it's a linear dynamics uh, where uh, the, the, the noise term, uh, which is uh, here, uh, is linear in the state uh, and action. All right. So, so if uh, for the moment uh, we assume that this is just a fixed parameter, uh, which is not quite true, but I'll show you later what we should do about that. Uh, then this is a linear dynamics and this linear dynamics can be combined with quadratic rewards and with these assets in order to build a fully uh, uh, analytical uh, recursive scheme for computing all parameters uh, of this model. 
Uh, I will not show you uh, the, the, the resulting formulas, uh, but they can be found in, in our book or in our paper. Uh, however, the, the important part, the very important part is the following, uh, that um, uh, uh, you remember this expression uh, for the optimal policy. So important statement is this, that if we start with the uh, um, Gaussian uh, prior policy, P0, uh, and uh, we use the, uh, uh, we have the quadratic form uh, for this function. So this is the quadratic function as, I, as we guessed, but as I told you, we can verify that this guess is right. So we have the quadratic form for this function as a function of X. Turns out that this function is also a quadratic form of X and mu. And therefore, we, when we combine these two things, we again end up with the a Gaussian uh, policy, uh, which is shown here. Uh, now, uh, you can see that it has the same form um, as the prior policy. So the mean, which means that the mean of this policy is, uh, is shown here is the linear function of uh, state X. However, uh, the parameters uh, of this mean, which I now call u tilde and v tilde, uh, are now different uh, relative to their uh, prior values, and they're given by this. So basically, what it means is that uh, a, by by uh, solving the G learning equation, uh, uh, we uh, a, a policy optimization amounts to uh, Bayesian updates. Uh, of uh, its parameters, uh, of its mean, and also of its uh, its uh, um, uh, matrix, uh, which is uh, which is shown. All right. Um, so, uh, uh, so the short summary so far uh, is 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 presented here. Uh, we, um, uh, as I said, a, the policy optimization amounts to Bayesian update. Uh, of parameters of the policy uh, from old values to the new values. Uh, now updates uh, the parameters of or, uh, uh, of these quadratic forms for the f function and g function uh, depend on time uh, through their dependence on 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 the targets, uh, these p hat quantities, and also on expected acid returns. Um, and uh, if we treat asset returns, expected asset returns as just fixed parameters, uh, then uh, we can then, then these equations, uh, uh, including those that I didn't show, are all that is needed according to uh, these dynamics equations. So you see that if this is a fixed parameter, this is the fully linear dynamics, right? However, uh, if, uh, as it happens in practice, the expected returns actually are not fixed parameters, uh, there are a change in time, right? So if you have a predictive model from each period, from each period there are different expected returns. Uh, what it tells us, it tells us that actually to handle this situation, uh, we uh, have to move to extended state space. We, uh, we have to consider a new state space, uh, which I'll show uh, here. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so, so if if expected returns are uh, actually dynamic functions, they're a function of time. Uh, then what should be modification that should be done with the formalism that I presented so far uh, are twofold. Uh, first, we have to uh, switch to extended state vectors. So we have to uh, add uh, uh, the expected return to the uh, our state vector and we consider extended state vector yt defined like that. And also we have to do a uh, uh, linearization of dynamics. So now we have, a, in terms of this y, uh, coming back to the this equation, uh, you can easily see that now in terms of y, this becomes no linear equation, becomes quadratic in, in states in, in, in y. Uh, and therefore what we can do, uh, uh, 
uh, the, the, the formulas that I presented so far, they assume linear dynamics and quadratic uh, uh, control, uh, sorry, and quadratic rewards or quadratic cost. Uh, so what should be done with uh, nonlinear dynamics? Uh, we simply have to linearize it. Uh, and, and, and how it's done, we start with some reference trajectory. Uh, so we, basically this reference trajectory is obtained by, we're making a guess first about the, the mean of our optimal policy and we call it Q bar. Uh, then uh, we apply this control uh, and we get the trajectory, uh, which we call uh, Y bar, uh, which is obtained simply by uh, running the dynamics forward without the noise curve. So it's a deterministic dynamics. Uh, and then we introduce uh, linearized variables, uh, which we denote uh, by deltas, delta Y and delta U, uh, using these relations, right? So, so we know that. And therefore, we can define delta y from this relation. We proceed the same way uh, for delta u. Uh, and then, uh, given uh, this y bar and u bar, uh, our dynamics is uh, linearized in terms of these quantities. So we uh, we, we linearize uh, 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 dynamics for delta u uh, using controls delta uh, sorry delta y using controls delta u. Uh, and repeat the whole procedure. Uh, now, this time in terms of now we, 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 we see, we look at the policy as a function of uh, uh, delta u instead of u. Uh, it's simply like according to this formula, uh, viewing it as a function of u versus delta u amounts shift, uh, uh, simply to a shift by u bar, uh, which is treated now as a constant. So everything keeps the Gaussian form. And, and all the uh, 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 updates of, of the Gaussian, this Bayesian update of the Gaussian policy that I told you goes uh, through in terms of the quantities uh, delta U uh, and delta X, according to uh, formulas which are shown here. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, for nonlinear dynamics, uh, we end up with uh, uh, a procedure which is uh, uh, really similar to uh, iterative uh, linear quadratic Gaussian regulator, uh, which was the method uh, proposed by Todorov and me in 2005. And the only difference uh, is that uh, uh, here we deal with uh, G learning and stochastic policies, while uh, this paper dealt with deterministic policy. <coughs> Uh, but in terms of the trajectory optimization, it works uh, the same way. So how the uh, method works, uh, we start with the initial trajectory and then we compute the G function uh, and, and F function in terms of these incremental values, delta uh, Y and delta U. <coughs> uh, then we update the mean of the policy uh, and then we create a new trajectory X bar uh, and uh, Sorry, u bar and uh, y bar and uh, u bar, and repeat the whole procedure until the reactions. And this this is summarized here. <coughs> um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll skip this slide in the interest of time, and I'll briefly talk about how you can invert the whole thing and consider the uh, inverse reinforcement learning formulation. So, what is the inverse reinforcement learning? The inverse reinforcement learning. Uh, you observe a sequence of states and actions, but you do not observe rewards. And uh, your objective is rather uh, twofold. is first to infer the rewards uh, from the uh, observed history, and, and second, also find the optimal policy. And uh, with this formulation of, uh, of uh, G-learning, which I presented with the quadratic rewards, uh, you can also consider uh, the IRL version of the same formulation uh, where you don't observe reward, but you infer it. Uh, and it also can be done uh, uh, if by formulating this as a applying uh, inference problem uh, with this uh, log likelihood of the data, which is a function of 
your uh, GNF uh, uh, functions. Uh, now, inference in this case amounts to inference of the uh, parameters of the work function, uh, which, uh, if you remember, we had four. And this can be done using standard methods such as gradient descent. Uh, details can be found in our paper with uh, Matthew, <coughs> which was published in, 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 in this. Now, in the remaining uh, 10 minutes or so, I want to uh, focus more on the, on the first paper mentioned in, 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 in my first slide and uh, talk about how we uh, applied uh, these ideas and extended uh, them in order to uh, learn from uh, professional fund managers. Uh, the idea uh, here was to combine uh, IRL and uh, RL. Uh, however, uh, uh, for IRL part, uh, we do just want to use the uh, inverse reinforcement learning version of G-learning uh, for a tricky reason. The reason is this. Uh, many, uh, if not most, algorithms of inverse reinforcement learning uh, they apply, uh, they imply uh, optimality of uh, observed actions. So uh, they refer to what is called expert trajectories uh, sometimes, uh, which means that uh, whatever you saw was already optimal, uh, or close to optimal, uh, maybe with occasional suboptimal steps. Uh, however, in, in especially in trading applications, in financial applications, you can never be certain uh, that uh, what you saw was optimal, right? It simply does not exist. Uh, and what can be done, though, uh, is comparison. Is comparison you can compare, uh, for example, uh, trajectories or behavior of uh, two different portfolios and say, hey, this portfolio was better than the other one because of its uh, cumulative uh, returns, or maybe it's just the returns were better over the observation period than uh, for the other portfolio, right? Uh, so uh, there is a method, uh, and, and this is where we use the method which does exactly that. Uh, instead of assuming uh, that uh, demonstrations were optimal, and, and, and using that to infer the, the reward function, it does something different. Uh, it says, a, um, uh, instead of uh, assuming that, we simply use demonstrations in order to uh, capture the, uh, the intent, the, the objective uh, of portfolio managers. Uh, and, and how it can be done? It can be done by uh, uh, analyzing the preference relations between portfolio trajectories. So portfolio trajectory in this sense is, a, is just the history of the portfolio, right? And, and we observe them uh, at the period of, let's say, six months. So preference relation for two portfolios, uh, I and J, uh, uh, of this sort means that the um, uh, portfolio J was better than uh, portfolio I in terms of risk adjusted period, uh, 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 risk adjusted return. Uh, now, how we can relate it to the uh, concept of reward? We, we can simply say that uh, if uh, R hat uh, was a function, was a model uh, for our uh, reward in the portfolio, then a, a portfolio J. Uh, with its own history of trades uh, will be better uh, than portfolio I, uh, and, and this notation will, would be used if the total return, to, sorry, total reward on this portfolio is larger than the total reward on the first portfolio. Right, so which means that if we have the history of the portfolio, we have the model, we can always compute theoretical value of the total uh, reward on each portfolio and compute the uh, theoretical uh, uh, probability uh, that uh, this reward is larger than this reward. And for this, we use the softmax, softmax uh, distribution. So, so basically we use this formula 
for the binary classifier, uh, uh, which is uh, which uses the, the the total reward of all trades in the portfolio in order to judge about the quality of the portfolio. Uh, this method uh, of IRL was proposed in, in, in 2019 in a paper by a researcher from uh, Washington University. And they called it TRAX, which stands for Trajectory Rank uh, Reward Extrapolation. And what they emphasized in the paper, uh, they, they use this, first of all, they use this for video games, not for finance. Uh, so it was a really different use case. They also used it in fully non parametric setting using neural nets, uh, we don't use neural nets here. Uh, however, the most important part, which was emphasized in the paper is that uh, this algorithm can not, not only mimic, but surpass a feature because it doesn't assume, you see, it captures the intent. It learns the reward model from, from capturing that. And once you know the reward model, you can, uh, you can find the optimal policy. You can re we really hope that you can surpass the feature because uh, again, we did not assume that the feature is optimal. And now we can put these uh, things together uh, and present a, a flow chart of our framework. Uh, now, uh, I, I uh, want to emphasize that even though we use particular uh, algorithms uh, for two parts of this flow chart, it's very flexible and you can replace it by whatever you want. Uh, but the basic scheme uh, uh, goes the same way. So we start with observations with routing criteria, and we use uh, these observations of different portfolios in order to infer uh, the, the functional form of the reward function using this IRL, inverse reinforcement learning step, which is then used by the direct reinforcement learning algorithm. So we use CRX and G learning. Uh, in our formulation, uh, you're free to use whatever you like instead, uh, if deemed uh, useful. And, and finally, uh, a numerical example. So what we did in our analysis, all the details can be found in this paper. Uh, we uh, took a few groups of uh, mutual funds uh, uh, with different uh, benchmark indices. We used uh, uh, funds uh, benchmarked by S&P 500 or Russell 3000. Uh, and the second group we further uh, divided by uh, the value and growth uh, funds. Uh, so we had the, the cumulative statistics can be uh, understood from this uh, table. I mean, not cumulative, but the data. Uh, we, we, we had a small uh, set. Uh, of funds, so we only had six funds uh, with S and P five hundred uh, benchmark and uh, seven funds uh, for uh, growth and uh, five funds for uh, uh, value uh, three thousand uh, benchmark. Okay. So we we group them separately uh, and uh, we uh, used uh, T Rex first in order to uh, learn collectively uh, the best. Uh, parameters of the reward function uh, given this trading behavior. So the interpretation of this step is that we're trying, like in this uh, caricature representation of reality with some of the caricature uh, reward function, we try to back up and, uh, you know, infer the, capture the human intelligence, if you wish, uh, by, by, by fitting these parameters. This parameter is rho, eta, lambda, and omega, which I mentioned. Uh, and what we found is that they show nice convergence. So these graphs show convergence of these parameters for the first group of funds. We find similar behavior uh, for other funds as well. Uh, before uh, uh, I turn into uh, a, a out of sample performance a, a analysis of out of sample performance, we also, I uh, can look at a uh, classification accuracy. Remember that our, our T-Rex, our, like our IRL part is the, is the binary classifier actually, right? Uh, we we uh, check if we can predict if one trajectory is better than the other one in sample out of sample. Uh, and uh, and uh, the accuracy of this classifier is illustrated here. Uh, what we see, what we found is that 
according to these numbers, we see like little deviation between the train and test, which shows that in the case that we do not overfit, the, the correlation between the theoretical prediction uh, and the actual uh, uh, reward is, is, is high enough. And it's, it's nice idea, uh, which gives some support in adequacy of our model. And now the, the most interesting uh, part is shown here. So uh, the basic question, uh, which is, uh, 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 the most important question uh, for these activities, I, I think, like, uh, what is the what is the most achievable uh, thing here? Can we only uh, aim at uh, at mimicking uh, what we see in in trading behavior of uh, uh, human portfolio managers, or uh, we rather can hope that we can improve it? Uh, which would be super cool, of course. And, 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 and this uh, uh, graphs uh, gives some indication that actually uh, we may hope to overperform uh, maybe not each uh, individual uh, fund. Uh, we did not observe that. Uh, so our paper gives uh, more detailed uh, graphs which we where we show comparison with of our proposed a strategy with each one of the uh, funds in our uh, training set. However, uh, what is shown here is the aggregate information when we compare uh, with the average performance of all funds in, 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 in each group. Uh, and uh, what we plot here uh, are two curves. Uh, we plot over performance over uh, a, a historically absorbed uh, uh, behavior uh, of our uh, trained algorithm, either uh, for trained data set, which is the red here, as a function of time, or uh, for test data set, again, as a function of time. So, so even though we use like we used two years of data, 2017 to 2000. Uh, 19 as a training uh, uh, set and 2019 we used as a test data set. So uh, obviously uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, course refer to different time intervals, we just overimpose them uh, on the same graph to show, uh, to show the most important fact. The most important fact is that as long as, remember that this is overperforming. So as long as, this guy stands in a positive domain, then it means that we are good, we overperform, at least on average. And this is indeed what we see here for most of uh, uh, these uh, uh, groups of funds, uh, which, is the, which is the encouraging sign. And I think here we uh, get to the summary uh, of this presentation. Uh, so uh, I showed you a two-step uh, framework uh, where we first use inverse reinforcement learning to infer the reward function of human portfolio managers. And then we use the direct RL algorithm to optimize asset allocation. Um, the method that we used uh, is, uh, again, in this uh, somewhat caricature form, but nevertheless, uh, we believe already practically useful form uh, is able to learn from collective intelligence of individual fund managers. And as I just showed you, it uh, seems capable of outperforming, uh, if not, but most of them. So obviously it can be used for asset location. Uh, it can be also used upon some uh, extensions to uh, recommend individual uh, uh, stocks or assets to buy. Uh, this framework can be uh, used uh, in also for fund analysis, for example, for segmentation of different funds according to their both perceived and declared investment philosophies. Uh, and also it can be uh, like I presented one particular way of doing that, uh, where uh, I forgot to mention it, uh, for dimensional reduction uh, in, in this framework, we did not work in the space of uh, all uh, available uh, stocks. Uh, we actually collapsed everything into exposure uh, of uh, 
industrial sectors. So the dimensionality n, uh, the number of facets in this particular example here uh, was taken to be uh, uh, 11 by the number of industrial sectors. Uh, and this was done for the purpose of dimension reduction, but uh, there are other ways uh, which could be used here. And for example, you could aggregate all assets uh, based on factor exposure, which would again achieve the same purpose um, of, 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 of reducing dimensionality, of making it more uh, manageable. Uh, and on this point, I would like to uh, stop and take some questions. Hey, Sam, I also would like to mention finally that some extras on, on math used in this work uh, can be found in our book, which is called Machine Learning Confinements, uh, which was co-authored with Matthew Dixon and Paul Biller. Thank you, and any other questions? Thank you.